Hi, Vern. You know, Vern, your old buddy Ernest has really done it now. Vern, every now and then, a fella comes down the street with lollipop road all over his face. Well, the old horse trader came out, and it was like taking candy from a baby. Check it out, Vern. All I had to give the guy, Vern, was a mint 58 Chevy and a set of Allen wrenches and, well, some other stuff. He called it a changing coffin. Vern, this is just between you and me now. All you gotta do is jump in this little baby, and you can change into anything you want. A general, a pirate, a movie star, or as he said, a master of time and space. He said it just like that, Vern. Just exactly. You wanna go first? Okay, here goes. It's really neat in here, Vern. Uh, Vern? Would you mind flipping that little switch there for me? It's are so relaxing. That was a nice break. But now back to the business at hand. World domination is a grueling, thankless job. But someone has to do it. Wait, Slavery, prepare the gloom beat. Yes, sir, Doctor. Girl, scramble stable. This is so much fun. Very soon now, even the smallest household pet will die of slow starvation. I am well acquainted with the gloom beam, Doctor. If it functions as projected, it will soon be an end to the entire world's economy, as we know it. The magnetic gloom beam. My most destructive invention. When they activate the device, a magnetic ray will be created. Travel out against the target. It will scramble and erase the magnetic impulses on credit cards, bank accounts, cash register. The economy will collapse. Credit will be gone. Money will be worthless. No one will escape the excruciating pain. Helpless, homeless children will starve in the streets like dogs. But we must be gentle. These are so convenient, you just punch in your number and electronically cash a check. Hello, I'm Speedy Bucket. I can take care of all your banking needs. I can take your credit. I can give you credit. I can give you credit. I can't believe it. We're rich.
Kenny. How it dances and sparkles. It's wonderful. And it's not only beautiful, really. It's destructive. What is your choice for the target, Doctor? <laughs> Cincinnati, of course. The financial capital of Southern Ohio. <laughs> Men, the dilemma we face is unequal in the history of Cincinnati Bank and Trust. All of the computer tapes in the accounting department have either been erased or scrambled. Checking accounts and deposits vanished. Bank loans lost. We don't know who owes what to whom. It's just a mess. <laughs> Demonstrate our problem with your display model. Yes, sir. What this illustrates is the global implication of this threat. I will drop this onto one of these rat traps. This cork will represent Cincinnati, which, as you know, has been ravaged by economic disaster unlike anything seen since the Great Depression. Worse, gentlemen, than losing the Super Bowl. While the loss of Cincinnati, in and of itself, is relatively meaningless, the possibility of setting off a series of chain reactions throughout the world is very real and very disturbing. Observe. Just put it on the card, will you? You know, I don't know how we got along before the credit card. Next time, use the sales service aisle. <laughs> seems to be progressing according to projections, Doctor. You should be most gratified. I will deliver to the world a riddle which may just save mankind. Nah, it's a lie anyway. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Showtime! Good evening. Thanks to the miracle of tissue-damaging microwaves, which also cause sterility and cancer. I'm coming to you, the whole world, simultaneously. And what I have for you tonight is a riddle. I love games, don't you? And if you don't answer this riddle correctly, and I believe that you have exactly no chance, it will mean the end of the world as we know it. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay, trivia freaks, you ready? Because I'm only going to say it once, and not very clearly. You ready? 
when the money is scrambled to the very last penny. Try it and hit it. Soon it come in. When all the world's commerce will be put in a bind from the evil that lurks where the sun never shines. It is I, Dr. Otto von Schnick, ik, 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 who is plagued on you, this trick, ik, ik, ik. But who's Dr. Otto? You may well ponder, while all your magnetic guess is squander. It's he who had an eye and yet couldn't see. It's he who served Boulevay when he was she. It's he who gambled with brains. And the gun, it's he who had all, and he had dead none. And to stop this horrible, twisted trick, just exchange the ball of all said Nick. And if that doesn't do to save the day, put another quarter in and try another play. Baba. Baba. <laughs> He's a madman. He's a madman. He obviously has no respect for anything. Human life, social values, the bottom line, nothing. There is one person who can stop this fiend, this paragon of evil. One man with the skill, ingenuity, and cunning to stop this menace to the free enterprise system. A man who has made it his life's work to stop this prophet of doom. Gentlemen, Mr. Lance Sterling and his personal secretary, Doris Talbot. Mr. Sterling, I'm sure that you and uh, Doris are aware of the grave situation we face. The whole financial fiber of this country is at stake. Yes, sir. And you know what they say. As Cincinnati goes, so goes the nation. Gentlemen, our noble institution is on the verge of collapse. Soon no one will be able to afford food or clothing. Riots will break out. The wholesale slaughter of cosmetic clerks will begin. The streets will run red with blood from stockbroker suicides. Now, to top it off, our earnings will be down. Don't worry, Mr. Rutherford. I'll solve this twisted riddle and bring this tasteless totalitarian to justice. Put your faith in America's champion. Yes, I know you will, Lance. I have every confidence in your ability to seek out this money-mad fiend wherever he may lurk and to put an end to him and his infernal machine. Do you gentlemen have any questions for Mr. Sterling? Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Sterling, if you could be any animal you wanted, what would it be? Well, now that's a tough one. It's him. It's who? Mr. Lance. Cutesy butts. He never gets poop on his shoes. Sterling. <laughs> He's cute. He's cute. Like the plague. Like boils. Like persistent itching. He can save my day any time. Mm. Mr. Clean Room. Never bought clear as hell crosses at the box, Sterling. You pea-brained incompetent. Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there were two little boys born in the same town on the same day. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sterling, little Lance is the favorite of the whole hospital. All the nurses are just in love with him. He's so cute. Oh. He's got his mother's eyes. <laughs> But he's got your dimples. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Hello, Father. I'm so glad you're my parents. Oh, he's got your manners. <laughs> Madame von Schnick, I have terrible news for you. 
It lived. Take it away! Take it away! You, you mean this is for me? This big box? Oh, oh, can I open it now? Oh, please? Oh, great. My own set of encyclopedias. Oh, now I can begin to unravel life's mysteries for myself. Gag me, baby. Shut up. This is the best Christmas ever. And you're the best parents anyone could ever have. I've got something for you. Open it. Lance, you make me so proud. I wonder what it could be. It's the White House. I made it out of toothpicks in my spare time. Oh, Lance, beautiful. Someday, I'm going to be a senator. I'm gonna make the world a better place for all people. Put her there, son. When I grow up, I'm going to be a senator and make the world a better place for everyone. It's enough to make you blow your face in the snow. <laughs> Father, can we say it just once? Since it's Christmas. Sure, son. Since it's Christmas. Uh, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America. and to the republic for which it I hate Christmas. One nation. Holidays were not looked forward to in my happy little home with my mommy and daddy dearest. <laughs> Maybe he won't come back. Maybe he'll run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always hope. It's all we've got. <laughs> but he did get us a Christmas present this year. What a surprise. The only thing I ever got from him before was nightmares. Oh, well, let's open it. Maybe we should wait until he's here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can sell it before he comes back. <laughs> all right. Let's see what... Little Otto got for his loving parents. <laughs> this is the best Christmas ever, and you're the best parents anyone ever. It is he who had an eye but could not see. It is he who served Goya Bays. He was a she. What does this mean? I've read it a dozen times, and I still don't understand it. Now, there's a surprise. Yeah. I'm usually really good at parlor games. Well, maybe Dr. Otto doesn't want to be found. <laughs> don't be ridiculous, Doris. What good would it do to have a riddle so hard no one could solve it? You're a smart girl, Doris, but uh, uh, sometimes you just don't think. <sighs> ah. Did you bring the cooler? Could use a cold drink. The world is on the brink of chaos. We're trying to save it. Somehow the cooler slipped my mind. That's what I mean, Doris. Sometimes you just don't think. <laughs> Goodbye. Akron? I'd like to hit him twice like that. 
he who had an eye but could not see. Do you suppose that could be Mr. Potato Head? Uh, it doesn't feel right, Lance. Well, what do you think it means? Well, I don't know. So, it could be Mr. Potato Head. Yes, Lance, I suppose it could. I thought so. So you think you will stop me? You think I'll just roll over and play dead? Oh, please, Mr. Stanley, don't hurt me. I want to do better. I, I, I want to be good like you. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Mac. Quick, Willie. More destruction. More carnage. It's, it's my lowest moment. It's all so, so deliciously unclean. It is he who served bouillabaisse when he was a she. Bouillabaisse. It originated on the coast of France. I knew that. As you well know, I'm a, I'm a gourmet cook. It shows. There is not an ounce of fat on my body. I'm on the metric system. And now for Mr. Perfect. Quick, Willie, really, into the changing carpet. We have work to do. Ah, the changing carpet is your favorite toy, Doctor. Today, we will transform you into a rebel attack, a soldier of fortune, and a socially unacceptable mercenary. Uh, this device goes way beyond your old Halloween makeup kit and actually transforms your features, transmortifies your speech, and gives you a natty change of clothes all at the same time. And hold on to your RNA, Doctor. This is your supreme commander. Have you spotted them yet? Oh, good. Then we can start to spring. No, a trap. I like this. <laughs> Car trouble. Doris, did you bring your AAA card? Lance, I don't think this is covered. Well, let's find a phone and call a service station. We will ruin these rims driving on flat tires. Youngsters look like they're having themselves the time of their lives. Physical training, especially when started young, can mean so much to a healthy, well-balanced life. Lance! Come back here! I'd love to, Doris, but duty calls. You know that. I've got to find a phone, fix the car, save the world, that kind of thing, huh? Somebody deserves a lot of credit for teaching the fundamentals here, and I certainly look forward to meeting them. That ruddy fool. I can't believe he just strolled into camp. Doesn't he know every shock troop in the free world is looking for that... Commie. Scum. 
to serve my database indicate that Mr. Sterling has been politically inactive since his unsuccessful Senate race. Don't you ruddy interrupt me, you ruddy liberal wimpy piece of ruddy tin, you what? Yes, sir, doctor. Well, ladies, let's go meet this Red. terrorist that calls himself Mr. Lance Sterling, eh? You know, when I was about your age, my dad gave me a BB gun. But the barrels should always point up for safety's sake. These are really wonderfully trained youngsters. I'm impressed. to challenge me face to face, have you, Mr. Lance Sterlinski, or whatever you call you? Ready. So, now I want... Uh, no. We just want to use your phone. See, we had car trouble, and, well, my AAA is you expired. You won't be using your... Ready. Three-letter code words to your... Ready. Commie comrades in the bush, what? No, 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 not that. No, we were driving, see, trying to figure out this riddle. Pull up this. Ready. Commie scum in the... Guest. Room over there. We'll play a few little games with it. Ready. Red rumps, what? What? This does not look like a phone booth. Now, phone booth has those glass panels, the little metal things, a shelf right here. Yeah, and a lot more private. Oh, what are you doing? How can you touch those things? I'm looking for something to help us get out of here. Well, whatever they had didn't help them much. Now, look, Doris. They're gonna be expecting us to break soon, to snap under the pressure. But we are tougher than that. We're Americans. Let's keep our morale high. Hey, I know. How about a song? If I were a carpenter and you were a lady, would you marry me anyway? Would you have? Economic news. Back to you, Mike. Mr. Rutherford, Mr. Rutherford, the entire city has erupted. People are going crazy. The whole country's in an uproar. Mobs are storming all the banks, burning their checkbooks in protest. They want their money, and everything is scrambled up. This Dr. Otto von Schnick. -ick. Ick has reshuffled the deck. And Lance Sterling is nowhere to be found. Cut him down. <laughs> Otto, or hard sack, wouldn't you to play a little spin the barrel? Oh, boy, Doris. I love to play games. <laughs> Comrade, you decided to take me up on my little invitation, huh? Well, 
I should get to go first. She always goes first. She always gets to order first in the restaurants. She always gets the window seat on the plane. Now I want to go first. Oh, by all means. Trotsky, drop the hammer. Do it. Lance Turley. It would be logical to assume that, as you say, I let him get away. I can't believe you said that. Do you believe? Do you believe what we machines put up with? I mean, I did everything a robot could possibly do. I shot my little arrow. I, I flashed everything up on the screens he wanted. I, I did everything that I, as a machine, could no, possibly do. Man, and what does he say? Sir, you let, let him get away. Me? You. Me? Terry? What a keep does not a victory make. You sure got out of that one easy enough. Don't talk about him. I hate him. I hated him for years. Otto, I saw your yearbook. Lance was class president. Yes, and captain of this. And leader of that. But it was there, in high school, that my scientific genius began to shine. I remember the science. between man and machine. That's all. Weenie. Big show, the boundary village. Ah! Very educated Work. girls. Proud of Did you paint that yourself? Yes. And what have you done for the fair, Lance? What I have done for my science fair project, Miss Apple, is to try and give our students an opportunity to see what it feels like to exercise our most sacred right, the right to vote. I believe, Miss Apple and Honored Judge, that each and every one of us has a duty to take a stand whenever the opportunity arises. As a proud American, and one who truly loves his country, I wanted to make the light of liberty shine. As President Kennedy said, it is not what your country can do for you. It is what you can do for your country. Oh, Lance. So, Miss Apple, 
Will you be the first to cast your vote for the freedom of choice? Why, of course, Lance. Ask not what you can do for your robot. Ask what your robot can do for you. Come on, Willy. <laughs> Let's play. Then it's let the fire. Hello, I'm your new D9 voice activated robot. I can walk and talk like a real person. I can perform a complex function. Sayonara, folks, through the ages. <laughs> Not the pork. I'm happy now. Little children in China don't get pork. Bye-bye, <laughs> Bow Wow. <laughs> Respect for anything. <gasps> Look what he's doing to Janie Newsom's project. Your project next. Watch it. Watch that. Notice, if you will, the robot's lifelike movement, its ability to understand spoken commands, and the vocabulary of nearly 700 words, such as. Attack, Willie! Search and destroy! Dora, Dora, Dora! Impressive experiment. Well, I hope this won't sway your judgment. After all, if I know Otto, he's found a way to cheat. And besides, he has no school spirit. Otto, you stop this. You tell this thing to behave. And now, let's exercise our most sacred right. Let's vote and vote and vote. La 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 la. la. One machine, one vote. <laughs> I just pulled the lever in this effort. Lance, this booth may have been a good idea, but it needs a lot of work to make it safe. No, but it don't play with me, Miss Apple. It was Otto. Lance! Be a man. Don't blame others for your mistakes, especially those less fortunate. La 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 but I don't... Those are the good old days. So, did you win the science fair? In a way. I won a special scholarship which allowed me to become what I am today. The human scum of the earth. I found them, Exalted One. They're in the deep woods. We have yet another chance to finish that imbecile. Oh, life is good. Quick, into the changing coffee. We haven't a moment to lose. Maybe it's a phone booth. Oh! Ah, that should hold you in. <laughs> What in heaven's name were they doing to that young lady? Uh, well, me proud beauty. Maybe a taste of the whip will make you like your face. No. <laughs> I still don't like it. Wait just a minute. If this is your idea of some elaborate sorority initiation, I think it's gotten a little out of hand. Don't look now, Polly. Let me think some fresh bait just swam into me, but... Now, I cannot believe that this young lady voluntarily participates in this type of shenanigans. Now, fun is fun, 
But this is going too far. So you think me lads have gone a bit too far? Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Oh, it's not Jim, it's Lance. Lance Sterling. And, well, yes, I do think this barbaric ceremony must come to a stop. Don't you agree, Doris? Oh, oh, oh. See, Dan? We all agree. You'll not be interrupting me chances of catching the dump now, would you, Jim? Uh, the, the dump? Ah, uh, the dump, Jim. The dump. Bring him along. Hey, 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 hey. Soft, but perishable. This is not my idea of hospitality. Now, a friend in need is a friend indeed. I'm sure you'll agree with that, Mr. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, now that we're all here, how about a game? How about a riddle? Okay, now, now, I'll go first, and you see if you can solve it. I tell you what, I've got it written down right in my pocket. If you just get it for me, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, a little more to the right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got Okay. Uh, can you open it up for me? Okay. What has an eye but cannot see? Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> he rises! I caught you now, you lurking garbage bag. The dump! The dump dies tonight! Jim, me thinks the dump would take a shine into you. Yeah? Aye, that he would. He likes young boys like you, Jim. Oh. That he does. Because you're so young and pink and educated. You wouldn't dare! He needs to be helping your old mate, laughing Jack O'Cockney, have his revenge on that foul-smelling dump that ruined me good eye. Well, I, I, under the circumstances, I... No, Lance, no. It would be good for you, Jim. Huh? I mean, that it would. Yeah, it would. And what would we have for him, Johnny? It's a cabana side-by-side -side freezer! This cabana holds up to 40 pounds of fruits and vegetables and has a convenient ice maker and water tap. All from cabana if you help Laughing Jack catch the dump. Back to you, Jack. Oh, oh I'm just overwhelmed. I don't, I don't know. My apartment's too small, and, well... We'll never help you, no matter what. Doris, the side-by-side -side freezer, we'd be fools not to try. you, Alex? Rudy. <laughs> well, I, I go by Lance now. Rudy, long time no see. Rudy? Yeah, 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 Rudy. How's it been going, Alex? Uh. How's the wife? Fine. Uh, and, and the kids? Okay. Oh, great. Alex, how about getting us loose? Piece of cake. <laughs> how do you know this? Uh, once upon a time, a long time ago, uh, I pulled a thorn out of his paw when he was just a baggy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lance. Goodbye, stupid bit. You'll thank me for this.
Collapses. Pound collapses. Frank collapses. Frank! Frank! The true dimensions of the economic catastrophe the entire world is experiencing will not be known for some time. What is known is that today the Soviet Union declared an end to the use of the ruble as its national currency and declared boiled turnips to be the new coin of the realm. In Denmark, the national sport of cheese wrestling was suspended indefinitely when the price of a single small gouda rose to 150,000 kolodniks. Since we are traveling in a diagonal plummet, we are either traveling northwest Southeast. So, if we knew where we were. Which we don't. We could get back to civilization and put an end to Otto and all his shenanigans. Oh. <laughs> Thanks there, Alex. Oh. Watch that slip disc, everybody. Oh, yeah, that's good. Listen, it is great to catch up on old times. With you, too. <laughs> Hey, lunch next week, okay? Sure. Same meeting place as always? Certainly. Good. Okay. Now, before you go, I mean, I know you gotta go. Let me read you something. Okay. To stop this horrible, twisted trick, just exchange the coals of old St. Nick. Mean anything to you? Doesn't Santa live at the North Pole with all the elves and everything, huh? don't you think? <laughs> ah, so you think that the pole of old St. Nick is the North Pole. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Listen. Great to see you again. Good seeing you. Lunch next week. Same meeting place as always? Of course. Good. Okay, say hi to the wife and kids for me. I will. And take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Ciao. What a prince. He's so resourceful. He is an idiot of global proportion. But at least my master plan for world conquest is coming along nicely. I still don't understand it all. Well, here, Tina, let me show you. You see this little object, no larger than your fingernail? Mm -hmm. Observe. By starting the blocks, you set up a chain reaction which puts pressure on world commodity markets, which in effect readjust the annual circulation rate of liquid accounts into the liability column. And the Federal Reserve will have to devaluate currency in a futile attempt to cope. Glue. In Washington, D.C., the food riots continued. And in New York City, looters rampaged through that city's financial district, tarring and feathering some two dozen bankers and brokers. And now we return to Love in the Afternoon. Hey, 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 hey. Mr. Rutherford, sir, I've been running this through our Centauri Systems XY computer, and it seems to have come up with an interesting twist on all this. Centauri's conclusion is that this Dr. Otto von Schnick Ick, Ick, is only a menace because we do not control him. If we could persuade von Schnick to be on the board of the bank or perhaps partner with the bank, we could control the world. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Roll back in. Something about all this. 
this. We've prepared some new scenarios. The Bay of Pigs? It could have worked. And there's wonderful Vietnam reports. Do you see a light at the end of this tunnel? But they're not bureaucrats. The economy has gone to hell in a handbasket. You guys think this could come? We've formulated a psychological profile on this Martianic character. I'm sure it's a breakthrough. You want the password? Green cheese is a mouse's only friend. Mr. President, the economy of this country is on the verge of collapse. Don't you think I know that? Sir, all of the government accounting computers have been wiped clean. The Treasury Department has no idea how much money is being printed, and what's worse, most of the senator's expense accounts have vanished from our records. You mean to tell me we have no idea how much money this country owes and who owes us? That's correct, sir. So, in effect, the national debt is wiped out. You could say that. That's great! Call the press conference. I'm tracking them. They're approaching the cliff. Oh! 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 Otto! What are you going to do? Tempt the idiot. Lure him to his doom. They will help me. And so will you. I'll lead him to his destruction and crush him like a ripe grape. <laughs> I hope I'm not out of line. <laughs> This place is full of mosquitoes. Where are we going, anyway? You're supposed to be the leader. Well, I can't do everything. My training is in making command decisions. Motivating large numbers of stalwart troops. Giving pep talks. That sort of thing. But I'm hungry. Fish. I can catch fish. I can use this little thorn for a hook. And, and I can unravel some thread from, from my sweater for line. Oh, and I can use this little gum wrapper for a lure. Boy, this is fun. find an easier path. Oh, boy, that's typical, Doris. Typical of too many women who try to make their way into the real world. They crumble at the first sign of trouble. running my hair's a mess and I'm gonna die why because I didn't listen to my mother 
and fell for a foreign accent with a hand growing out of his head. <laughs> to die now and miss the whole rest of my life. <gasps> but that's the way life goes for little Tina Nelson from White Plains. <laughs> <laughs> You were never in any real trouble. Fear is a phantom that clouds the mind. I love it when you talk metaphysical. <laughs> oh, great. Food at last. You know, my blood sugar is at an all-time low. <laughs> so that moron of morality has taken our bait. Mr. Un. Sterling, you won't get away this time. Get out of my way, you master. Aren't you pay my conductor? I'm trying, Doctor, but I, I I'm think... not too. We're entangled. I can't get this oversized sense of magic off me. <gasps> to the changing coffin. <laughs> The chicken was good, but on a balanced diet is important. Bird can't fly on a broken wing, as my mother always said. Would you like some sweet repose? Repose means sleep. I knew that. I got excellent scores on the verbal part of my SATs. And I always did well in English. The math part always got me, though. Me too. I never understood any of that stuff. Quantum theory, astrophysics, binary trigonomics. It made me feel so dumb. Well, we have something in common. Have we? Uh, Doris? Uh, Doris. Well, we need to stay together, okay? Looks like we're on the right path after all. I could use a hot bath and something to eat. Boy, me too. You don't think this is some sort of trick, do you, Doris? Well, why would I think that? We're miles from civilization, in the middle of an impenetrable forest, following the only path anywhere, and watching Auntie Nelda signs pop out of nowhere. Why would I think this is a trick? Good. It felt all right to me, too. Work, work, work. That's all I do. 
I hire a domestic, it's like adopting a child. He creates work for me. I ask him to do a few simple tasks. Water the flowers. What happens, I end up watering the flowers. Well, you little darling, you blow me. Here. I hope you strangle on it. You're lucky to get it. Little flowers in China don't even get water. Hello, travelers. Boy, this is our lucky day. She seems real nice. Welcome to Andy Mills. Boy, right this is our lucky day. She seems real nice. We're going to have a little we don't have a chance. We're going to meet lots of nice young Someone's in the kitchen, baby. Someone's in the kitchen, I'm going to wear. Someone's in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cannot be hurried, Doctor. Now, battery breath. Now. It really needs a few more minutes, Doctor, for the ingredients to marry their essences. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a Julia child to deal with. But, but, but Doctor, I, I, oh, 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 oh not my Doctor. Oh, 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 oh. This is no trick. What would make me think this was a trick? All right, Miss Grump, just be that way. She'll feel much better after a hot meal and some sleep. So will I. So pick up those fingers there, Bolthead, and mop up the rest of that oil. Please forgive any disturbance. I don't suppose I have to tell you how hard it is to find suitable help nowadays. I know just what you mean. Smells yummy. I am starved. Oh, me too. It's from an old family recipe. Um, aren't you eating? No, dear. I'm on a water diet. Well, I hope you're taking a vitamin supplement. I try to take care of myself. My son, Jaime, he never took care of himself. He didn't weigh 90 pounds soaked in paving time. Well, I'm famished. What's in this, anyway? Oh, just some fresh herbs and things from the garden. Bonjour. This is the incompetent I mentioned earlier. Wine, the mademoiselle. Please. I hope it's called duck. You would. And you, madam? Uh, none for me, thanks. It's an excellent year. It's audacious and yet endearingly understated. Well, I, I usually don't drink, but, well, tonight feels special. Uh, no, thanks. I would consider it a personal insult to my hospitality if you did not drink a toast to my dead son, Jaime. What's the matter with you, Doris? It smells like an excellent year. Mm. A bit presumptuous, but not too brash. Sort of fizzy. Tickles my nose. She is so cute. Come on, Doris. All right, but I've got a bad feeling. To those weary travelers who came so unexpectedly and brought with them such happiness for a tired old woman. You don't know what it means to me to have company. Me, a tired old woman with a dead son who is no longer alive. I guess you don't get many people here. You build a little restaurant. You try to make a way for yourself and your lady years. And what happens? They move the flippin' highway. And in the name of progress. Merci beaucoup. Doris. 
You're embarrassing me. stand it when people take advantage of my trusting nature. Well, it takes all kinds. There was something strange about Auntie Nelda, though. And my father told me never to eat in restaurants where the prices weren't on the menu. Well, it's too late for that now. Well, I hope they've come to their senses. My wrists are beginning to chafe. Tina, boy. I'm glad to see you. Don't be. She's in it with Auntie Nelda. Oh, well, we had so much in common. I'll always remember you, Lance. Here's looking at you, kid. What's going to happen to us? Auntie wants to freeze dry you and use your body parts to feed her army of zombies. Well, at least we won't be wasted. I signed the organ donor card on the back of my driver's license. <laughs> Can you just stand by and, and let her turn him in, into part of an army of zombies? Can you do that to the zombies? Basically, I'm not a very good person. Oh, <laughs> I don't believe that for a minute. It's true, though. I've lied and cheated and swindled and stolen, even killed people. Well, sure. Who doesn't have a few things in their past they'd rather forget? Besides, I think they sort of add character. How can you do this? I don't know. Oh, I don't... I mean, Annie Neldy. She'd be so mad if I'd let you go. Well, look at it this way. I saved you from the killer chickens. I helped you through the forest. I... I tried to open up and relate to you as one human being to another. I gave you makeup tips. You owe me this. I've never done anything good before. It's not so bad. No, it's really easy once you get used to it. Why, there are times when I can't stop doing good things. Yeah, it's like eating peanuts. So, Willie, for all your obvious incompetence, the Bula base was excellent. And the wine was immaculate. Gee, thanks, Doc. Your service, as usual, was atrocious. But the food was... Tina, saying goodbye to Mr. Perfect, huh? If you think that you can get away with this, you are very much mistaken. On the contrary, I have gotten away with it. And as soon as my marginally intelligent assistant prepares the hardware, I'm going to turn you into crusty little fragments of your former self. Taking advantage of people who are weaker than yourself is the mark of a bad person? It's me. I'm a real sicko. I suppose you could blame my parents, but I just can't stop doing nasty things. <laughs> it's like eating peanuts. <laughs> there you are. Oh. Willie, you imbecile, what have you broken now? Can you believe the things I have to put up with? In many ways, I'm almost a saint. I should live with Jaime, God rest his soul. Uh, uh, doctor, uh... 
Are you really going to let this happen? Don't talk to me anymore. If you could just undo one hand. Well, we could say I did it myself. We, we could say a rat bit through it. We could say... Be quiet. Oh, all right. This may not save you, but it'll sure change things. Great idea. Cover us up, and we'll lie real still, and she won't even know we're here. Well, it's dark. She's old. It could work. Uh, what is this? It's a transporter shroud. I'm not sure how it works. Transporter shroud. Doris, does this make any sense to you? Anything makes more sense than becoming part of an army of zombies. But my analyst says, Otto, you mustn't keep those feelings inside. You need to let them out. Anger can be a very healthy thing. And when I get angry, the thing I want to do most is destroy something. But Otto, I didn't do anything wrong. She did. Sweet Monique, you've been like a daughter to me. You've been with me for years. Never complain. Always faithful. And this is how I repay your loyalty. Sometimes I'm disgusting even to myself. What's this, Tina? Oh, baby. <laughs> So good to get those pent-up anxieties out of the system. Uh, sorry to interrupt, big guy, but Lance Sterling approaches. To the changing coffin. To that old changing coffin. <laughs> now, where are we? Lance, don't ask me any questions. Don't explain anything to me. Don't say a word. <sighs> now let's try to find a way out of here. Doris, I... Now not... Not a word. somewhere. Back to good old civilization for me. Lance. Lance, wait. Lance, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of money. More wealth than you can possibly imagine. But I like to think I'm the same unspoiled guy dandy I was before I inherited every dime. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not the only rich person in the world. There are other rich people. I know. I gave them their money. We have company. <laughs> Pardon <and> moi. <laughs> ah, I'm Guy Dan. The Guy Dan. <laughs> the one you heard so much about. <laughs> Where are we? You with me? And what better opportunity to meet me? Guy Dandy the man, not just the legend. <laughs> How about a little drink you took? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we really need, Guy, is to use your phone. What you need, Frankie, is to get up against the wall and be real quiet. Why did you do it, Frankie? We was partners. You double-crossed. What made you think you could get away with it? It's happening again. Again? No. <laughs> Sorry about that Senate seat, Lance. My dad bought me a seat. Me be wearing Saturn. Me be had the rain. Uh, the time there, maybe it's a mile. 
That's wonderful. Not only was it successful, it was ruthless and completely unnecessary. Rhonda Sue, prepare for the final collapse of the entire world. The final blasts from the gloom beam will obliterate the women and children from the planet. <laughs> and if we're lucky, we could hit a few innocent bystanders. Such a mess of things. I let everybody down. I acted like such a fool. You were right about everything. I just didn't pay any attention to you. Oh, pull yourself together. <laughs> you don't be so hard on yourself. So you're not perfect. Big deal. No. Sure. Nah, it's just like you, Doris. You're level-headed. Clear thinking, you know. You, you never give up. You're grace under pressure, personified. I hate to see you like this. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> we're a team, you and me. Yeah. Yeah, just because we're in the bottom of this dark pit, or we're gonna die a horrible death, oh, and everybody's gonna say it was my fault that everything went wrong, and it was Lance. my fault. yourself. You hit me? I'm in the middle of a personal crisis and you hit me. It was for your own good. Pain is never for your own good, Miss Doris Talbert. Yeah, sure. I made some mistakes. <laughs> sure, things could have gone better. But you didn't have to hit me. Schnickick's headquarters. You may be right. The riddle said, the evil that lurks. Sun never shines. Welcome to my side of town, Mr. Lance Turley. It's been a long, long time. Yeah, it sure has. Uh, let's see. Uh, you missed our tenth reunion. I was introducing cholera to the third world nation. Well, it's a good excuse, but well, everyone ask about you. It was nice we could have this little chat before you die. Really? Kill them. Oh, now, Otto, don't you think that's a bit unfair? I mean, uh, there are two of us. You can't hurt him. He's 
comfortable and completely immune to pain. Uh, Doris, why don't you see if you can reason with him? Always been very, very good at mechanical stuff. Let's dance. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thanks, Doris. Oh. Well, it's just you and me. Come on, fight like a man. Correction, Mr. Turley. That leaves you and us. It's he who gambles with his brains and a, a gun. What? To he who had an eye but could not see. <laughs> it was he who had all and yet had none. <laughs> So that's the way you want to play it, huh? Well, okay. Now the gloves come off. <laughs> young man, young man, they're going to make me their love slave. That's the most outrageous thing I've ever heard. Stay back, ma'am. They'll have to come through me to get to you. choice between right and wrong, the ultimate decision that every man must face. Now is the time. I must draw on the sum total of the things I've learned here on Earth, from my good breeding, my sense of style and color, excellent taste in wines. How do I decide? You can do it, Lance. We're counting on you. Make me proud, son. Ten. Nine. How do eight, I make this final seven, choice? Five. One potato. Four, two potato. Three potato. Four. Two, one. Zero.
share, too. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, maybe this place will have some gas. You know, I bet it will. Sure. Just because the last 12 places we've been to have been out of gas for months doesn't mean that this place will be out. No, we mustn't get cynical as we get older. Can we have a fill-up? We ran out of gas down the highway. Hey, we got customers. What's wrong, buddy? Trouble under the hood? Well, the only trouble we have around here is we're out of gas. Where have you been? We ain't had any gas since the money went bad. No dinero, no petro. Brendo. Let's go. I'm tired. Can we stay here? We better go. Okay. Thank you. Hey, girls. How about a song? If I were a carpenter and you, Doris Calvin and Tina Nelson from White Clay, you were lazy. Bye bye, y'all. Have a nice day. <laughs> Oh, man. 